Welcome to John Gets Games. Today, I'll be doing a full three-player playthrough of Transatlantic. In this game, players will take on the role of shipping companies around the turn of the 20th century, and they'll be purchasing ships and setting them to sail on the Atlantic Ocean in order to try and get more victory points as well as money to buy more ships. The game shares a mechanic as well as a designer to the game Concordia, and I will teach it as we're actually playing it, although I do want to uh, say that unfortunately there was a audio recording issue with the rest of the video, so the overall quality is certainly lower than I usually like to put out, but I've done the best I can, so I'm just going to apologize for that, and let's go ahead and jump into the game. Here we have the table fully set up for our three players. Uh, just so you know, you always have this one four location slot on the table, and then you have one of these side slots per player. And it's also worth noting that these are double-sided. Uh, I decided to go with an American-centric set of cities, mostly because I like the way the art kind of flows from one to the other, as opposed to just being a big blue background. At its heart, Transatlantic is a card game, and we'll be playing from the perspective of the red player over here. We have this set of red starting cards. All players start with these seven cards. And let's go ahead and do our first turn, and we need to figure out which card to play because that's all you do on a turn. You just choose one card, play it in front of you, and evaluate what it says. So let's take a look at some of the options. This first one is the most straightforward, I think. It says purchase up to two steamships, and then you can deploy one of them out to sea. Well, up here is the market for purchasing steamships. And when we look a little bit closer at them, we'll see the cost to purchase the ship in red. And then also there is this extra uh, fee that is associated at the higher up you get on this market. Now, it might seem like fun to buy a ship right from the get-go, but we do already own a ship out on the waters. And at the start of the game, we only have 80 bucks. <laughs> Everybody starts with 150 and then they purchase one from the row, but I've taken care of that setup already. So with only $80 left over, that does mean we could purchase the uh, Germanic or the city of Berlin over here, but we'd only be purchasing one ship instead of two, and it's always nice to be efficient with our actions, so maybe we're not going to be purchasing a ship this turn. Our next potential turn option is transport. Now, down here it just says you can let two of your own ships transport, and right at the beginning of the game, we own the Leander and the Atlantic. Now, the Leander is actually a sailing ship. Uh, we are currently moving into the age of steamships out on the Atlantic, but uh, this is just a remainder of the age of sail, and every player starts with one of these sailing ships, and there will be no more sailing ships that come out. Uh, I purchased the Atlantic over here. It cost us uh, 60 money plus a little bit at the beginning of the game. And when we transport, we simply get money out of those ships according to the green uh, section on the card. So if we went ahead and did the transport um, for these two ships, we get 20 bucks for the Leander and 30 bucks over here for the Atlantic, which would be nice, I guess. Actually, they're pounds, but anyway, the 30 money plus 20 money, that would be 50 money for us. And um, the Leander over here, since it's a sailing ship, it does not require coal to transport, which is why it would go. And over here on the Atlantic, if we did that, we would consume this coal, and then we would not be able to activate the Atlantic again until we put more coal down on top of it. And this is a really good way for us to get money, but there, if we um, go ahead and activate these ships, there is a way to get victory points if we have little houses in these spots up above. And it seems like a bit of a shame to activate our ships and then not get victory points for it. So let's go ahead and skip forward a couple to this card, and I think this will be our first play of the game. Uh, the first thing it says is that you can either buy one of these tokens, which I'll explain in a bit, for 50 bucks, or you could pay for a trading house, paying the uh, cost printed on the board, and then get one of these tokens for free, or we could get a new uh, coal uh, factory or uh, warehouse or something like that, and then place more coal out on the board. But we don't want to do that. We want to get this house down. So if we look over here, that's only going to cost us 20 bucks. We can easily pay that, bringing us down to 60 pounds total. And then we place the trading house over here on the spot. I think this is a good first turn because as you can see, they get more expensive as the game goes on. And it means that on a future turn, if this ship transports, we will get a victory point for it. It's just one-to-one -one with the trading houses that you have in those specific areas of the board. With the trading house down, we're not actually done with our turn because remember, we get to get one of these tokens for free and we can now look at our player board here. Now, along these three sections over here, we have goods, we have mail, and we have passengers that can be um, transported with our ships out on the Atlantic Ocean. And when you look at these three colors, they do match up with some of the colors of the ships out on the board. In fact, right now we only own a white ship. And so I think, let's go ahead and take the white token and we put it down here. And that means that when that ship eventually gets scrapped, uh, we're gonna score it and it'll be worth three points instead of one point. So I think going pretty uh, hard on the white might be a reasonable start for us as far as grabbing these tokens. And with that, our turn is over and green can go. 
they decided to start off with the transport option, so they now get to transport two of their ships. Just like everybody else, Green currently owns these two ships. They have the Cuddy Sark as well as the Abyssinia, and when we look over here, that's going to be 30 plus 20 or 50 pounds for them. And then, of course, uh, when you activate your sailing ship, nothing really happens, but the Abyssinia over here has consumed one coal, so it is now done, and it cannot be activated again until more coal is put down onto it. Blue now takes their turn, and they're going to play a new card for us. This is the ship agent, and it says they can copy the last card played by an opponent. This means their options are to do a transport action or to do an invest action, and they've decided to copy our investment. They're going to pay 20 pounds in order to put a trading house over here in Philadelphia. And since they currently own a green ship, they're going to go ahead and put this freight token down there, making it more valuable to them. It's now back to us, and I think it's worth mentioning that you're never allowed to play a ship agent down and then copy another ship agent. So we can't, like, uh, copy blue to copy our investments or anything crazy like that. So I don't think the uh, ship agent makes sense right now. And the shipyard also doesn't make sense because I don't think we can actually afford anything since we spent money on that trade house. Uh, so I think we really need money. Let's go ahead and go ahead and do a uh, transport action. Now that we've got that trading house down, we can go ahead and play this. Our uh, Leander over here is going to get us 20 money which is nice, and then the Atlantic is going to get us 30 money, and it's also going to activate our trading house, which is going to get us one victory point. This jumps us onto the board. This is going to be the first of many, many points that we generate throughout this game. For Green's second action, they're going to head over to the shipyard. Now that they have 160 pounds available to themselves because they did that transport on the first turn, so this is going to allow them to purchase up to two steamships. Looking up to the market, they've decided to grab the Germanic, which is going to be 80 pounds, and then they're also going to grab the City of Berlin, which is going to be 70 plus 10, or 80 pounds. That means they're going to spend exactly all 160 pounds of theirs to get both of these ships out. Both ships now get a captain, and every steamship comes into play with one coal on it. But if you remember, you only get to deploy one of them with the shipyard. So they've decided to go ahead and deploy the Germanic, and they're going to keep the City of Berlin over here in their supply, and they'll probably bring it out relatively soon, because many of those starting cards force you to deploy ships that you have in your reserve. Whenever a ship is deployed, you have to look at the date of the ship. This one is 1874, and then it's going to have to go into a region where it is going to be the youngest ship. And right now we have, uh, well, every single region is going to be older than that, so Green can kind of pick and choose. They decided to go with Halifax over here. Now, when this gets deployed, it's going to shift all of the other ships down, and this one's going to lock right in there. The last thing that the Green player has to do to finish out their shipyard action is to reset the ship market. Now the first thing that happens is you take the leftmost ship, and it is actually going to go over into the docks. So you're always going to burn one of these, and it's going to go over here, and I'll talk about these in just a second. There were no red ships already, so it's going to make its own uh, little uh, column there. And then the rest of these are all going to slide down, and we're going to refill from the top of the stack. And you may notice that the uh, number at the top of the stack, it says three. We started with one ship, and so then went to two, and now we're at three. And this uh, stack right here is actually a game clock for us. In fact. We just got into the four stack, and the game is going to end once we've gone through this entire deck, and we now have a variety of new ships to choose from. Since we just added a ship to the docks, let's go ahead and talk about it briefly. Uh, the rest of these ships came out in the uh, setup of the game. In a three-player game, you pull one card out from each of the uh, numbers in our stack over there, which go from one to nine, and then I just sorted them over here. And whenever a ship is scrapped because it gets pushed out from the bottom of a board, you're going to not only get the, get the victory points that are listed on your player board, but you'll also get one point for every ship of that color that's in the docks, which essentially means you're going to get bonus points if your ship is rare. And this is one of the reasons why we actually started the game by buying the Atlantic, because right from the get-go, we saw there were four white ships in the docks. It's now time for Blue to take their turn, and they decided to go with Region. So this is a new card we haven't looked at yet, and you'll notice it has the kind of wheel at the top, which means it is going to be similar to the transport card that we've seen. But this one says that, first of all, you have to deploy one ship if possible, but Blue has not purchased any new ships. And then they could choose one region, and then all ships in that region are going to transport, not just the Blue ships then they will take the income of the oldest transporting ship from another player as an extra bonus. Now, the reason they're doing this is because the green player just put the Germanic over here in Halifax. So that means that Blue is going to activate Halifax. This is their sailing ship, the Thermoply, so it does not need coal, so it will activate for themselves, getting 20 pounds. And then as a bonus, the oldest ship from an opponent that's going to activate is actually the Germanic, which is a very new ship. The Abyssinia cannot activate because it does not have coal. That means the Germanic is going to go. The blue player, as a bonus, is going to take 40 money from the bank uh, for that bonus. 
and then the Germanic is going to activate, losing this coal, but it's going to give 40 pounds over to the green player as well. This means that the blue player actually made 60 pounds total, and sure, they might have helped out the green player by letting them also get that money, but they consumed the green player's coal, and uh, the blue player still has coal on their other ship, which maybe they'll activate on a following turn because they actually have a trading house over there. So either way, the blue player was pretty happy with their turn. Oops, I just realized that on our last turn when we transported the Atlantic, we forgot to actually consume this coal. Sorry about that, but there were no actual ramifications on the gameplay. Play has now come back around to us, and we need to figure out what we're going to do on this turn. So uh, we now know what region does. In fact, the blue player just did it. But there is no great spot to do that. Like, we could activate region over here in Philadelphia, um, but the blue player will get a victory point because they have a trading house over there for the Adriatic, and we would get 20 plus 30. We would only get 50 uh, pounds, and the blue player would also get the 30 pounds out of it. So I just don't think that's a great um, decision for us. And then Cole right here, this does allow us to load up coal, but right now we only have the Atlantic uh, as a ship that can take coal, so it seems a little bit inefficient just to load up that one. We could put it around to other ships. Uh, this director card, which I haven't talked about yet, cannot be played unless it is at least the fourth card in a round, and we're currently playing the third one, and I don't really feel like ships agenting anything. So let's go ahead and I think buy a ship at the shipyard. Currently, unfortunately, we only have uh, 110 pounds, though. This means that when we look out to the ship options available to us, there's just no way we can buy two for this one shipyard action, unfortunately. The Arizona is 90 pounds, the Belgian land is going to be uh, 70 pounds, and the Columbia is also 90 pounds. So I think let's just go ahead and buy the Columbia for 90 pounds. That's going to spend uh, most of our money. Both of these 50s go away. We now have 20 pounds to our name, but that is enough to buy a trading house in a couple spots. And when we take this, well, a big reason for that, instead of taking maybe the Belgian land, which is cheaper, is that we've already invested in getting a mail token on our board so that white ships are going to score better for us. Also, I explained how the dock works, and the white ships are the rarest in the game, and they get a bonus of four points currently when they get scrapped as well. So I think this is a pretty good pick. Also, it's important for you to look down here. We have a couple other modifiers on these cards that are uh, important at certain times. The uh, tonnage for the Columbia is going to be 3,000. The speed is going to be 16 knots, and then the passenger carryability is going to be 800 people. We can see that the age of the Columbia is 1880. Uh, and that means currently it could go on top of any one of these rows. It is the youngest ship out here. But I think instead of going over here in Boston, even though we do have a trading house, and if we um, are able to transport both of our ships, we'll get one point each for them. I think it's also a pretty good idea to start working on New York. We can go ahead and slide this in, and there's a special thing about New York. Not only does it have one extra trading house and one extra slot, that means it's going to be, uh, the ship is going to last much longer. But also, you may have noticed this little symbol right here, which is the blue ribbon. Now, in New York, whenever you deploy a ship, and it is the fastest ship in that specific region, you get to gain a blue ribbon. In fact, this is the only way to get them in the game. So I figure right now, since we got the Columbia, not because it's fast, but because it's white, it is faster than the Scotia, which always starts the game into that spot. In fact, you can see it printed on the board right there. It's a neutral ship that always um, is able to uh, deliver because it has its own coal on there. Because we put this over here, we're going to be able to grab one of these from the supply, and I think we may as well do that for while we can. So we can also put a captain down on the Columbia, and it starts off with the coal. The ribbon now goes down onto our board, and if you'll notice the flags above these, obviously the, um, the mail over here helped our white ships, but this means that we're going to score better if we are able to get blue ships going. So we kind of incentivize ourselves there. Also, if we look at the docks, there were two blue ships out of the game as well. So I think when we uh, go ahead and buy more ships, we now definitely want white ships, but we're also looking at those blue ships as well. Lastly, we have to go ahead and reset the ship market. So the Arizona is now going to be sent over to the docks. So the uh, green ships are becoming a little bit more uh, worthwhile. The rest of these are going to slide on down. This is actually a relatively cheap blue ship over here. In fact, this one is as well. Maybe we can sneak in and grab this one, but of course we need to get some money first. We can slide the Umbria down here. And now we have the uh, black Eturia and then the green city of New York. It's now Green's turn, and they've decided they want to activate their coal card. Now, it says they can load as many coal units as their number of bunkers plus two, and they have to distribute them evenly amongst their ships. Now, if you look at the player boards, everybody starts with one printed coal bunker on it, so that means Green is going to take one plus two or three of their coal, and they now put these down onto their steamships, so obviously they can't load up coal on their sailing ship of the Cuddy Sark over here. 
So when it says you put these evenly down, what that means is you look at all your steamships and you find the one with the least coal. For green, both of theirs have no coal, so they can put this down on the Germanic, and now the one with the least coal is the Abyssinian. They are now both tied for the least coal, so they can choose which one of these gets the second one, and they've decided they're going to put it down actually onto the Abyssinia. It's now back to the blue player's turn, and they've decided to go with transport, so they get to let two of their own ships transport. They currently only own two, the uh, sailing ship Thermopply down here, and the Adriatic. So the Thermopply is going to get them 20 pounds, and over here the Adriatic is going to consume its coal. It's going to get them 30 more pounds, so that's going to be 50 pounds total for them. And also, since they have a trading house over here in Philadelphia, that's going to generate them one victory point. And just like that, they are tied for the lead. <laughs> It's once again our turn, and we have a lot less options available to us. We've played three cards, we only have four left over, and I think I've talked about all these except for the director, so let's go ahead and see what this offers us as far as options now. It says, first of all, you take all the cards back into your hand, there have to be at least four, and that does include the director card, so we could play this this turn if we want to. Um, and then when we do that, we would actually gain a new action card that's over above the uh, ship market, and we play that card immediately, which is pretty nice. But if we look down here, we also see that if we have six cards instead of four, we would also get a free token, whether that be um, the mail or the passenger or the freight, but also we could get a coal bunker, which would allow us to deploy more coal whenever we activate the coal card. Uh, that hasn't really been a problem for us just yet, but um, at some point, we're definitely going to want to be able to put lots of coal out there for a single action. And then, of course, if we got up to eight cards, which is actually impossible uh, before we actually refresh once, you would get two of these tokens that cannot be the same. So we are somewhat incentivized maybe to stick around. I mean, if we look at the options, um, the coal card, we could play this. We could put three coal out. Um, currently, we have ships that can easily take that. And then next turn, we can play the director and get a bonus token. Or we could play the director right now and play one of those uh, actions up top. So let's go ahead and look at the options. These new cards are called extensions, and they offer new action options or just upgraded versions of stuff we already seen. So for instance, this coal over here is just an upgrade for the one we have. You get a, uh, a bonus coal, also you can distribute them however you like, as opposed to being even. But then there's other cards like this one that says fleet, you get two points per active steamship of a different flag. So this is just a way to generate victory points in the middle of the game, but for us, we only have one flag right now. We've gone with the white, we've kind of doubled down on that. Looking at the other options, transport is just another upgrade. You can activate three of your ships instead of two, and then of course you'll have this card and your regular transport in your hand, so you can kind of do them back to back if you really want to. This is a better investment. It costs more money, but you get more tokens, and the cost of the trading house is kind of folded into it. And finally, we have commerce. Get $50 per trading house you own, which is very tempting, honestly. We already have one out. Uh, playing a card to get 50 bucks is not bad. Um, especially, we'd be incentivized to put more of these trading houses out, which get us victory points and even more money every time we play this card. All of this adds up together to make a pretty important and tricky decision for us because, well, if we go ahead and play the coal right now and then get the director out later, then we're going to get another token. And these are definitely nice to get down. The, the main ways you get them are through the investment tokens and through playing a bunch of cards. And as you can see, you'll get a good amount of points if you keep playing these down. If I keep going hard on uh, white, then we're going to get lots of points for those ships we've already bought. It is worth noting that you get uh, a good amount of bonus points at the end of the game for every completed row that you have as well, so you are incentivized to go wide as well. But an another thing to keep in mind is that if we director now, that means we'll be able to clear all these cards off and then director again sooner, uh, and maybe get um, the ability to grab more of those really good cards. And when you add that into the fact that uh, both the green and the blue player might also um, pass with the director card, and the blue player already has a trading house, so they are also incentivized to grab that commerce card, I think I just can't pass it up. Let's go ahead and play the director card down. This means that we have the prerequisite four cards, so these all come back into our hand. And now let's go ahead and grab and evaluate this commerce card, but also we can refresh this card row. Just like the ships, you always discard the leftmost card. This one goes into a face-up shovel pile. If we go through this whole deck, we'll shuffle it up and then redeal it. And then, of course, we have to bring out two more cards. Let's see what those options are. This one that says cruise, this one actually lets you transport a ship, but then you get 10 pounds per 100 passengers. So it does consume a coal, but it's going to give you money based off your passenger amount, not based off of the little green banner up at the top. And the next one is another ship agent. So we've seen this one before. You just have the ability to do more copying of your players if you get that into your hand. So commerce now gets played, and we only have one trading house currently, so that's going to get us 50 pounds. 
But another really nice thing about this card is that it's a way for us to get a decent amount of money, especially if we get more trading houses out, without actually having to potentially activate our opponent's ships, and it doesn't require coal. So I'm glad we have this ongoing option available to us. With that all done, it's now the green player's turn, and they've decided they want to do their first investment, and they are going to put a trading house out. Not at all unsurprisingly, they've decided to put this down over here in Halifax. That's going to cost them 20 pounds, and now uh, when these ships get activated, they'll be able to uh, get a lot of points out of this trading house. I mean, right now, that would be one point per ship, so a couple points is definitely good. And this stuff scales up, and there's no way to lose these trading houses as the game goes on, so that's just there for the rest of the game. To round out their investment action, they also get a token. You may have noticed that it has a green, a white, and a yellow. This appears to just be a misprint. That yellow should be red. So they're going to take a red uh, luggage to token for uh, passengers because they did purchase a red ship. So they're just making that one um, more appealing to themselves. Uh, if they had not done the trading house, they could have built a coal bunker over here and then also loaded some more coal. And that is nice to them considering they own two black ships, but they really wanted that trading house out. It's now the blue player's turn, and they've decided to go ahead and activate the shipyard. They're going to try and purchase two steamships, which should be possible considering they have 180 pounds available to themselves. After looking over their options, they've decided they want to buy the Belgian land for 60 pounds and the Harmonia over here for 90 pounds. So all total, that's going to be 150 pounds for them. The ship row is now going to be restored. It looks like the red Sterling Castle is going to head over to the docks, making red a much better type of ship. We're going to slide all of these down. And the three new ships are the red Britannia. We've also got the blue August Victoria. <laughs> and then the red Lusania. They can only deploy one of these, and they've chosen the Belgian land. It was made in 1878, and they want to put it over here in Philadelphia, which is fine because the current youngest one is 1872. So they'll slide those down, and then of course add a captain and a coal. It's once again our turn, and we have all of our cards available to ourselves. It's the same set as the uh, beginning of the game, because of course this commerce card was played out when we took it. So we have a few options to us uh, available to us. I mean, we definitely need to get some coal out onto our ships, but one good option for us is the investment, but even better is using this ship agent, because as we can see, the green player just did the investment. So we could use the ship agent and then potentially invest again because the quicker we can get our trading houses down, the more effective this commerce card will be when it gets pulled back up into our hand. So I think that's probably a pretty good use of our turn. Let's go ahead and do the ship agent. This trading house can go down onto any of the open slots. The only restriction is you're never allowed to have more than two of your trading house in any of the given zones, but I can still double down on Boston. But everything else but New York has been purchased at the cheap level. So I figure, let's go ahead and go to New York. It's only going to cost us 20 pounds, and right now we only have 70. So I think being uh, thrifty with our money is probably a good idea. Also, we already have the uh, Columbia over here in New York. So we're definitely incentivized to put this here. We're going to get points when we activate this ship as well. And now we can go ahead and take a bonus token. It can be freight, mail, or passengers. But at the moment, we still only have the white ships. So let's go ahead and keep going hard on it so that we get even more points for it. I mentioned you get bonus points at the end of the game for completing a row, but we have a lot of time to come back around and try to fill these in. I'm sure we'll be buying non-white ships at some point, hopefully soon. It's now Green's turn, and they've decided to play the region card. But before they actually activate region, they must deploy one of their ships, and they do actually have the city of Berlin here. This ship was built in 1875, and that means that it cannot actually go into Philadelphia or New York because both of those have younger uh, ships than the city of Berlin. So it has to go over into one of these two spots. They could slide it in over here on top of the Atlantic, but they've decided to just go crazy over here in Halifax. They're going to deploy it over here, which is actually going to bump the thermal fly down. So as soon as a ship is bumped off of the board, uh, one of two things happens. The first is if there is a region on the board where this ship can go according to its date um, and it does not bump another ship off, then you can actually squeeze the ship in. So we see this is 1968, so that means it could actually go into this slot right here where it's going to be underneath the 1969, and over here at 1962, that is actually going to be uh, uh, younger, or older, I'm sorry, than the thermal pie. So the thermal pie can come over here and bump the Scotia down. The blue player has the option to go uh, with one or the other. They could also choose just to scrap the ship and pull it out of the supply, but they decided that they are going to redeploy it. And as soon as all these slots are filled in, no ships are ever going to redeploy again. And they decided, why not? They'll jump it over here onto New York. 
Since green played the region card, that means that they are obviously going to be activating Halifax. All of these are going to activate, and they're not going to get a bonus for uh, opposing uh, foreign ships because they just squeezed all of them out, but they're okay with that. So when the city of Berlin activates, that's going to give them 40 pounds. When the Germanic activates, that's going to give them another 40 pounds, and the Abyssinia is going to get them 30 pounds. So that is 110 pounds total, and then their trading house is going to get one point for each ship that just transported. Well, that is three of them, so green gets three points, which puts them right into the lead. Plano comes back around to the blue player, and they're going to activate their investment card. And they have decided they're going to put a trading house down. Over here in Philadelphia, they already have two ships, so they're going to go ahead and put this down here. That's going to cost them 30 pounds, which is good because they have exactly 30 pounds to their name. And that means in the future, if, of course, they're able to get some coal down here on the Adriatic, and they evaluate both of these, they will get two points for each, or four points total. And then, of course, they finish it out by taking a free token for their board, and they've decided to go with the green freight one. Okay, it's come back to us. Uh, we did that ship agent on our last turn. We now have quite a few options available to us. We only have 50 pounds, so I don't think we're going to be able to buy any ships. In fact, I can uh, tell you right now that they're all more than 50 pounds currently. Um, our uh, ships out on the board are not doing great on coal. We only have one coal, which means I don't think we're going to want to activate the region or do the transport. Uh, we can't even do the director ships, so that means we have a coal or we have invest. And, you know, we just invested last turn, but maybe we should do it again. Uh, the sooner we do this, the cheaper everything is going to be, or the trading houses are going to be, and uh, we can get around to doing the coal on our next turn. Of course, the risk is if one of our opponents does a, a regional scoring type of thing, um, our ships won't activate if they don't have coal. But looking at over our opponents, we're pretty sure they are going to be uh, passing and doing their director on their next turn. So let's go ahead and read into that and play the invest card down. Unlike our opponents, we have not been going hard on any one given region. We're kind of spread out across the board. So we have a couple different options. I mean, I think doubling down on a region is probably a good idea, especially considering, well, certainly I'm not going over here. That's very expensive. So it's New York, it's Boston, over here in Halifax. There's really no reason for us to go to Halifax at the moment. Uh, the green player is obviously kind of dominating it. I mean, later on, we might push our own ships in over there. So if it's just Boston or New York, I figure let's go down to New York because there are four slots on here, which means our ships will last longer. So we're more likely to cram it full of a bunch of our ships and get a bunch of victory points for having all of these trading houses. Of course, as I said before, you're not allowed to have more than two trading houses in any given zone. So that is it for us in New York. That did cost us 30 pounds. We have 50 to our name. So now we have 20 left over. Lastly, we also get to take another. Lastly, we also get to take another token. And, you know, I figure, let's go ahead and do one more mail. If we look at the bonuses, it's two points to go to here, two points to go to here, and then two to go here. This last step just gives one extra bonus point. And in fact, you can keep going beyond this, just every additional token is one point. So I think by putting this here, we're essentially uh, done with uh, putting these white mail tiles down for quite a while. We'll probably focus on doing the other stuff to try and start completing these rows. Uh, as it is, that's seven bonus points when our white ships get scrapped, although uh, right now none of them are even close to having that happen. Okay, so now play goes over to the green player. They only have two cards left, and they're definitely going to play down their director. When they put it down, they now have one, two, three, four, five, six cards total. So that means they get to take one of these bonuses. It is the usual stuff that we've seen for the investments with the, uh, the freight, the mail, and the luggage. But they also could take a coal bunker, and that is in fact what they've decided to do. They don't have to uh, spend any money for it. It goes down here. The green player has, I believe, control of two different black ships. Yes, they do. So they definitely want this not only to get more coal out on the board, but also to increase the amount of points they get for those black ships. And with that, all these cards are going to come up, and they get to choose and evaluate one of the extension cards. After thinking about all of their options, green decides that they want to take this upgraded investment card. Uh, of course, once this is taken, we then discard the leftmost card. We have to move all these down. We get to pull two more out. This next one is cargo. This is a new type of card. If you look down here, it says that you have to deploy, and then you can transport one ship, and that it's going to earn income based off of its overall tonnage, not based off of the uh, green number over here. So, uh, for instance, if you were to ship this uh, city of New York, we see that its tonnage is 11,000. That means that it would actually get 150 pounds uh, for doing cargo on this specific ship, which is a lot better than 70, which is the way you normally do it with the uh, transit. And then lastly, we have a global. This is another new card. Uh, this one also says that you deploy ships. 
and then you let one ship per uh, region transport or one uh, steamship per flag transport. So a couple other options for you to kind of pick and choose which ones are going to actually evaluate. Of course, when you're doing global, you're also probably trying to activate your own. So green can now finish off their turn by actually evaluating this upgraded investment card. They get to take two of these tokens. They can't be the same. They've decided to go for one of these luggage and then also another one of these coal bunkers for themselves. And now um, if they took a coal bunker, they could take two coal or they could place one of their trading houses down and there's no uh, further cost. Although of course, when you play this card, they do have to spend a hundred pounds to do so. So they're gonna go ahead and put this trading house out and this can go down onto any of the spots. Uh, part of them feels like going over to Philadelphia because they've already paid the money, they don't have to pay the penalty, and that's the most expensive spot on the board. But for now, they have all these ships over here in Halifax. They'll go ahead and go over here, even though it's not quite as efficient money-wise, it's certainly quite good for them when it comes to actually just generating victory points, and that is how you win the game after all. We've come back to Blue's turn, and they have decided to do a director card as well, just like the green player before them. They now have one, two, three, four, five, six cards played. So that means they do get this bonus of one of the tokens. And they have decided, actually, instead of doing a green, this seems like a decent opportunity for them to place down one of these coal bunkers. They don't have any black ships, but this does allow them to get coal out more efficiently. And they are definitely trying to think towards the future here. So they now go ahead and collect all these cards and they get to play a new extension from the row. After thinking about all their options, Blue's decided they're gonna take this cruise card. So once they've grabbed this, the leftmost one is going to get discarded, and we can now bring out two more. Uh, this first one here is the Blue Ribbon. Okay, so this is a, another new type of card. If we look at the specifics, it says that you uh, deploy a ship if possible, and then you let uh, one ship transport for every Blue Ribbon you own. So everybody starts with one, and we were able to pick up another one by putting that fast ship over in New York. So this is obviously uh, quite good if you keep putting fast ships over in New York. And the next card is gonna be a shipyard. So this is just an upgraded shipyard. You can uh, buy two steamships like normal. You can uh, deploy one of them. The bonus here is that you load one of them with an extra coal. So the blue player now activates their cruise card, but before they do any of the text down at the bottom, they have to deploy the Harmonia. It was constructed in 1881, and currently it is the youngest ship out of any of them out on the map. So the blue player can put this in on any of these regions, and considering they have these two uh, trading houses over here, they're gonna do this. It seems somewhat obvious for the moment. Uh, they, just like the green player, have kind of specialized over here. That is gonna bump off our uh, Leander, which was made in 1867. So when we look at the other options here, we can see that the Scotia is 1862, and the uh, Thermal Pie is 1868. So we can actually squeeze this between the two if we wanted to, and we can also put it over here. It would just go down the bottom but we have two trading houses in New York versus the one in Boston. So why don't we go ahead and do this? And now we're very much incentivized to try and maybe do a region scoring over here to try and squeeze a bunch more victory points before the uh, Leander is kicked out. It's of course nice because it is a uh, sailing ship, uh, which is <laughs> actually um, a, a newer ship versus the Scotia, which does actually run coal and sailing ships don't require coal for us. So yeah, we've scooted over there and now Blue can finish out their turn. If you don't remember, the text down at the bottom of the cruise says that they can transport one ship and they get 10 pounds per 100 passengers. That means when they look out here, they're going to activate the Belgian land. It has 1,200 passengers. That means they're going to get 120 pounds for activating this ship. And of course, the coal goes away and it's going to give them two points for their two trading houses, which ties them up with green. Okay, play has now come back to us. We, uh, interestingly enough, have three cards down. So we could hypothetically do a director right now as well, because that would be our fourth card. But we have other things that I think we'd maybe like to do first. Uh, in particular, we have a very attractive um, uh, region scoring potential out in New York. So I think we probably want to do that. I mean, getting some coal out would also be nice. Um, but another reason to um, uh, hold on to the directorship is maybe to get uh, one of these uh, coal bunkers so that we can get more coal out. We haven't actually activated that once, I don't think yet. But Either way, I like the idea of doing a region scoring. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're gonna activate New York. Over here, we see that the Columbia when activated is gonna get us 40 pounds. The Thermal Pie is a, a sailing ship. So the blue player is gonna get 20 pounds for us doing our turn here. So we kind of helped them out a little bit. And then the Leander is gonna get us 20 pounds. 
And then finally, for the region scoring, the oldest foreign ship is that activated also pays out to us, which is going to be the Scotia at 20 pounds. So that is going to be 20 plus 20 is 40 plus another 40. That means we're going to get 80 pounds right now. And then we activated two ships and we have two trading houses. So that's going to be four points for us as well, which jumps us up to five. With all that done, play now comes back to the green player and they decided to play coal again. So they're going to get uh, coal uh, equal to their bunkers, which is three plus two, which means they actually get to put five coal out for this one action. They do still have to be distributed evenly. So currently the Germanic and city of Berlin have none. So they can put them down just like that. And they now have three left over and uh, three of these steamships. So that means that they're just going to have to spread these out here. And it seems like a good time to mention that you're never allowed to put more than three coal on any steamship. So they are pretty well stocked for doing some high point value activations. Play now comes back around to the blue player and they've decided they're going to coal as well. They have two bunkers, so that's two plus two equals four coal. And like normal, they have to be placed out evenly. So one's going to go on the Belgian land, one will go on the Adriatic. They're going to throw a second one on the Adriatic. And the third one, well, they're going to put it back on the Belgian land, especially considering it uh, cruises so well for them. Okay, it is now our turn once again. Uh, let's see, we did that region uh, scoring on the last round. We currently have 100 pounds to our name, which unfortunately is not enough to buy any ships. The cheapest one is 140 pounds right now, so things have definitely gotten more expensive. Uh, we could load our ships up with coal. In fact, we have no coal out at all at the moment. We could also direct it right now, but directing for five uh, is really terrible. We definitely want to get up to six to try and get that bonus. And we can't transport anything because we don't have coal. So I think our turn is actually pretty obvious. Let's go ahead and do coal as well. Unfortunately, we have not worked on our coal bunker infrastructure at all yet. So that's just going to be one plus two or three coal going out. So we have to start off by putting one down on the Columbia and then one on the Atlantic. And this third one can go on either of them, but I think the Columbia makes a lot more sense for us because we're more likely to want to activate it multiple times because it's got these two trading houses for ourselves. And also it pays out 40 pounds instead of 30. So uh, with that, we are done coaling. It's now time for the green player's turn and they're going to go with region transporting. Not unsurprisingly, they've once again decided to go with Halifax over here. Uh, again, there are no foreign ships for them to get a bonus off of, but they're still going to get a whole bunch of stuff. So the city of Berlin is going to get them 40 pounds. The Germanic is going to get them 40 pounds. The Abyssinia is going to get them 30 pounds. So that is going to be, let's see, 80. That's 110 pounds total. And then they're going to get six points because that is three plus three victory points with their two trading houses. And that's going to jump them all the way up to nine. Okay, we've now come back to the blue player and they've decided they're going to do a transport action, which is going to allow them to transport two of their ships. They've decided they want to pick the Hamonia and the Adriatic. And one of the reasons they're doing this instead of the region scoring is they kind of want to save the coal over here on the uh, Belgian land to use the cruise card again later in the future. So the Hamonia is going to get them 40 pounds. The Adriatic is going to get them 30 pounds. And then these two activated in this region where they have two of these trading houses. So that's going to be two plus two or four points. They were at three and now they're at seven. And of course they get their 70 pounds. Okay, we get to go again. We currently have one, two, three, four, five cards played and three in hand. And that means we have an interesting um, uh, thing to think about here because if we played every one of our cards, we would then get to the eight level, in which case we would get two of these tokens instead of the one bonus. But I'm not sure if that's actually gonna make sense. Right now, unfortunately, we only have a hundred uh, pounds to our name. We could do a transport action. Uh, that would get us um, some extra money and then we could do a shipyard action in order to get all the way up there or we could just do a director right now and then pull all this awesome cards back up into our hand. I think that probably makes more sense. Like getting the extra bonus is certainly nice, but I think we really want to get commerce played again because right now it's going to be worth 150 pounds just to play that one card, which we'll maybe do on the next turn. So let's go ahead and just go with this. We'll play the director down. That's one, two, three, four, five, six cards right here. So we do get to take a bonus. And I think we're definitely done with white uh, with the uh, mail tokens for a while. And uh, we are certainly hurting when it comes to coal bunkers. We haven't taken a single one yet. So why don't we do that now? I'll go ahead and slide that in right there. All these cards come back into our hand and now we get to pick an extension card. Looking out at our options, unfortunately nothing really jumps out at us. Uh, we have the shipyard, which is just a little bit better than ours, but we didn't even use ours on the last go around and we certainly can't afford anything right now. Uh, the blue ribband, we do have two of those, so we could transport two ships 
which is kind of nice. And if we get more of these blue ribbons tokens, this card will get better and better the longer it's in our hand. Uh, the global, it lets us um, activate different regions or specific flag types. And that does mean that we could just use this and activate all of our white flag ships if we wanted to, but we could also do that with just a transport card at the moment. And then cargo, this is an interesting way to make potentially a whole bunch of uh, money, but unfortunately all of our ships would just be lodged in at the 100 pound level. Uh, in fact, uh, one of them is 3K and the other one is 4K, so I lied. Uh, none of our ships would even uh, work for the cargo card. So what that means when you add all this stuff up is I think we're just gonna take a second ship agent card. It's exactly the same as the one that we already have in our hand, but I think having two of these available to us in every given round is definitely gonna increase the options that we have. It does mean that we could potentially jump on and use the really powerful cards of our opponents uh, if we do it at the right time. So we'll go ahead and take this one. That means this cargo card is going to be discarded. We now get to pull a couple new ones out. Uh, we've now gotten into the B stack. This one is also um, sorted between A and B. Uh, this card is a, another shipyard. Actually, the moment you put this out, I have to discard it because you're never allowed to have two of the same card in this overall display. So we'll discard that one. We'll pull the next one. It's a blue ribbon. That one gets discarded as well. And now we have a fleet. Okay, so we've seen this one before. It is uh, two points per active steamship uh, with different flags. And then we have a better version of the transport. And part of the reason we have the big discard pile is because, like I said, if we ever get through this whole thing, which we might, if we're discarding so fast, we can shuffle up and then keep adding those back in. Of course, since we picked this ship's agent, we now get to copy one of the uh, abilities of our opponents, their face-up card, and that one is going to be either the region uh, transporting or the transport transporting. Considering we're still set up pretty darn well in New York, let's go ahead and hit that one again. So the Columbia is going to get us 40 pounds. The Leander is going to get us 40 pounds. The blue player is going to, once again, get 20 pounds. They're definitely uh, doing well having the thermal ply over there. And then as our bonus for the oldest activating ship is the neutral Scotia, so that's gonna get us 20 more pounds. So that's gonna be 20 uh, plus 20 is 40 plus 40, so that's 80 pounds total. And again, four points for our trading houses. And that's gonna tie us for the lead at nine. It's now time to go over to the green player and they've decided to do a shipyard action. They're gonna try to purchase, well, up to two steamships. They're getting quite expensive. But considering they only have 150 pounds to their name, they're only going to be grabbing one. And they've decided to grab the Umbria over here. That's only going to cost them 130 pounds. They then take the Etruria, and it is going to go into the docks, making black ships better, which is definitely a thing that the green player likes, considering they now have three of them. And they're going to go ahead and finish replenishing the overall ship market. We have the black Campania, and then the blue First Bismarck. So now we have the Umbria, which was made in 1884, and it needs to go into a shipping lane, but that's actually the youngest ship of any at the moment, which isn't too surprising. Nobody's really been buying ships recently. So they have decided they're actually gonna go over here in Philadelphia. It's going to kick the Adriatic down to the bottom, but that one's gonna get redeployed, and the blue player has decided they actually wanna redeploy the Adriatic into New York, which is gonna go, let's see, it's 72, so that's between uh, 68 and 80. So both of these bump down, the Adriatic goes all the way up there, and the Scotia is going to bump down over here because it is 19, uh, 1862, which is less than 69. And with that, every single spot on the board is now filled, so there will be no more redeployments for the rest of the game. As soon as another ship comes in, it's going to actually kick something out, but we'll get to that soon. Play has now come over to the blue player, and they've decided they're going to do the director, actually. It is only the fourth card, so they're not going to get any bonuses, but this is going to reset their hand, and they get to grab a new extension card. Out of all these options, the blue player has decided they want to go with fleet. This is one of only three ways to score points in the middle of the game. Uh, so they're going to go ahead and grab this one. The global card is going to be discarded. We can slide these down, and now let's see, we've got a, another commerce. So we <laughs> would definitely like uh, to grab that one. It's uh, certainly much more in our sights now. And then there is coal. So this is just the upgraded way to get a bunch more coal down. And of course, you don't have to do it evenly with this card, which definitely makes it more flexible. Blue now, of course, activates the card they picked. It says they get two victory points per active steamship with a different flag. So obviously the uh, original uh, sailing ships are not steamships and they don't have flags. So the blue player has a green ship and they have a couple blue ships. So that means they have two different colors. So they're gonna grab four points for that action. And that's going to jump them up to 11. With that, play has now come back to us, and we have a ton of different options. 
Uh, right from the get-go, uh, this commerce is obviously attractive. If we played it, it would be 50 pounds per played trade house. We have three of them, so that would be 150 pounds. But I have another idea up my sleeve. I think that maybe we want to actually invest right now. We have a reasonable amount of money. This will let us get yet another trading house down, and this seems to be a pretty good time to do it. So let's go ahead and activate that card. We're going to put one of our trading houses out. Now, the main reason I'm thinking about doing this is because the trading house locations are starting to dry up. And over here in Boston, we already have one. And the next one is 30 pounds, and the one after that is 50 pounds. So that's a pretty big jump up there. This one is 50, this one's 50, and we're not allowed to even go into New York anymore because we already have two. We have the Atlantic over here in Boston, which hasn't been doing a whole lot for us um, since the beginning stages of the game. But I figure, let's go ahead and do this. Now, um, we are going to be hypothetically... Uh, maybe the only player to have two doubles. I guess uh, blue or green could sweep in and grab both of these, but that's somewhat unlikely. Uh, and also, we put this down at the cost of 30 pounds, so we can go ahead and spend that. And I think next turn, when we most likely do the commerce, we'll actually get 50 pounds worth out of uh, that trading house. So I think that this stall is a pretty good plan for us. Of course, as the last part of our action, we get to grab one of these tokens. But as I mentioned before, I think we're less interested in doing yet another one of these mail tokens. We should probably do a green or a red. We don't own any green or red ships. So let's look out here. We see that there is one green currently on the market, and there are two reds. And in fact, one of them is pretty cheap. So there is a slight possibility maybe we could go ahead and buy these two red ships. And I think that's good enough for us to go ahead and choose this one for our bonus. Green now gets to take their turn, and they've chosen to go with ship agent. And they only have 20 pounds, which means that they aren't going to be copying our investment over here. Instead, they're going to copy Blue's fleet action. So they are going to get two points per flag on ships that they currently control. At the moment, Green has three black ships and one red, so that is two different types. That will be four points for them. They were at nine, and now they're up at 13. Okay, so Blue now gets to take their action, and despite having quite a bit of money over here with 230 pounds, they decide they're not rich enough. They're going to play cruise down. They don't have any ships to deploy. So they can jump right down and send the Belgian land out on a cruise. It has a population of 1,200, so that's going to be 120 pounds for the activation here. And since they have these two trading houses, they're also going to get two points, tying them up for the lead at 13. All right, it's back to us. We have 130 pounds, and I think it's time for us to go ahead and play our awesome, where is it? There we go, commerce card. <laughs> we play this down. We know that we have four of the trading houses out. So that is going to get us 200 pounds right there. So suddenly we have 350 pounds to play with. I think we should probably buy some ships soon, considering at the moment we still just have um, two of the steamships and our one sailing boat. It's now come back to Green's turn, and they have decided they want to play the Director card. They have one, two, three, four, five, six cards available to them. They are going to go ahead and take yet another one of these coal bunkers, putting it down there as their bonus. All these cards are going to, of course, come back into their hand, and now they're going to choose a new extension to evaluate. Out of all these options, they quite like the idea of this upgraded transport because it lets you do three ships instead of the usual two that you have in your hand. Of course, you could also play both of them, which is nice. That means that the blue ribbon is going to be discarded for now. We can cycle these over, and now let's see. We've got a, another one of those upgraded investment cards, which are quite nice. And then we have another cruise card. So now green gets to pick three of their ships and activate them. And even though they have a bit of a toehold over here in Philadelphia, they still like the idea of just hitting Halifax hard. So they're going to do all three of these ships so that when the city of Berlin activates, that's going to be 40 pounds. The Germanic is going to get them 40 pounds. The Abyssinia is going to get them 30 pounds, and then of course that's going to be 3 plus 3, or 6 points for them. And that goes ahead and jumps them all the way up to 19. Okay, so with all that taken care of, the blue player now gets to go, and they want to head over to the shipyard, and they are stacked. They have 350 pounds to play with. Despite having all that money, they've decided to go for the two leftmost ships over here. They're going to grab the city of New York for 160 pounds, and the Britannia for 70 pounds. So that'll be a total of 230 pounds, and that leaves them quite a bit of money left over to do other stuff. This means that when the market is restored, the blue Augusta Victoria is going to be sent to the docks, which actually works well for the blue player as well, because they already have two blue ships, so both of them just became worth one more point for them. And then we can cycle all of these down here and see three new ships. We've got the St. Louis, which is a green ship. We've got the Black Canada. And then finally, the blue Kaiser Wilhelm. 
They now have to deploy one of the two ships, and the city of New York was built in 1888, and they decided they want to send it over to New York. So that's going to kick out our Leander down here, bring in all of these down, and a big reason they're doing that is because the city of New York, well, I guess that thematically makes sense, but also it's a very fast ship. It's the fastest one in New York now, so that means the blue player is going to get one of these blue ribbons, which is, of course, going to give them more points for their blue ships. There's now one last thing for us to do to finish out this blue player's turn, and that is to get rid of the Leander. It now is going to go to the scrapyard, but whenever a ship is removed from the board, it does one last farewell transit tour, which means it's going to do its uh, standard transport. That's going to get us 20 uh, pounds because we uh, don't need coal because this is our sailboat. And since we did it in New York and we have two of these uh, trading houses, we're also getting it two victory points. So that brings us up to 11 points. And then just to reiterate, whenever a ship is pulled off, it gets scrapped. That means it's going to be removed from play entirely. It does not go down to the docks. And also, since this is a sailing ship, it does not have a flag. So we're not going to score any victory points for it. But that is likely going to be starting to happen soon, uh, since many of us have lots of money. And we're probably going to be visiting the shipyard somewhat often now. With all that done, we can now take our next turn, and I think it might make sense for us to do something similar. We've got a ton of money now. Uh, we actually have more than the boot player did. We have 370 pounds available to us. And right now, we're not in an amazing position to do any kind of transporting. We certainly don't desperately need money at this point. Um, coal is not the worst idea in the world, but realistically, I think that what I sh we should do is shipyard. Let's uh, spend this money in building ships because, well, we only have two out on the map now, and that is a big way we get points, so let's see what our options are. If you remember, a couple turns ago, we did take this red luggage token, which means we are a little bit incentivized to try and grab red ships, but at the moment, there's only one out here. It is over here with the cheapest modifier, although it's certainly not a cheap ship at 190 pounds, but I do think that this is probably a nice one for us to grab. And uh, so let's go ahead and do this one. And then looking at our other options, we uh, currently, as far as the tokens on our board, I guess I can bring it over here so you can see, we have uh, two on the blue. We also are at two on the black. So that means when it comes to these next couple ships, they're both about equal when it comes to points. And uh, for green, we haven't done any extra so far. The Campania does pay out better at 70 instead of 60, but it's also 50 pounds more. Um, I guess, um, actually, between the two, it's only 40 pounds more between them. But I think, let's go ahead and do this, especially considering by potentially playing one of these, we could do it into New York and get another blue ribband, which would make the blue ships more um, attractive to us. So by grabbing these two, it looks like we are going to be spending 190 plus 130. That'll be... Let's see, on camera math, that's going to be 290, that's going to be 320, 330, 340 pounds for these two ships. So just like that, we are no longer rich anymore. Uh, we now get to deploy one of these two ships, and this one pays out at 80 pounds, and this one pays out at 60. So I figure let's go ahead and get the 80 pound one uh, deployed earlier on, so we can maybe hit this one more often. It, of course, comes with a captain on it as well as a coal, and it came in at 1893, which is certainly younger than 1888. So let's go ahead and send this over to New York, because this is a really fast ship. At 21, it is faster than 1916, 14, and 13. So that's going to kick out the thermopy. These are all going to slide down, and that means that the thermopy is going to do one last farewell tour. It's going to give the blue player 20 uh, uh, pounds right now and no points because they don't have any trading houses in New York. Lastly, we do have to update the market. That means this uh, black Campania is going to come down here and I think the green player is very happy to see all of their black ships getting more and more valuable with this happening. And then let's go ahead and refresh the ships. It looks like we have the green New England. We also have the red Armenian and then we have the green Baltic. And at this point, you may have noticed that we are in the 7 zone. And I mentioned it before, but I'll reiterate that we are going to keep playing until every single one of these ships are uh, purchased, actually. These 10s are slightly different, uh, and we'll get to those when we actually see them. But as you can see, we're definitely progressing pretty well along with the game. And of course, we can't forget to grab our bonus blue ribband because that was the fastest ship in the New York region. We've once again come back to the green player, and they've decided to play their... Um, uh, extension version of the investment. This one costs them 100 pounds, so that brings them down to 30. 
but it also means they get to take two tokens that are uh, different from each other, and then they can place a trading house down anywhere as long as there's a slot. They don't have to actually pay for it. For the tokens, they've decided to go with one green and then one red, and they are indeed going to put a trading house down. They're not allowed to put it over in Halifax because they already have two, uh, but they could put it in Boston, New York, or Philadelphia, and they decide that they're going to plug it down right over here, filling out Philadelphia. Play has now come back to the blue player, and they've decided to do a regular old invest action. They want to, let's see where they take one of their trading houses, and they want to build it in New York, which is going to cost them 40 pounds. As normal, they also get one of these bonus tokens, and they're going to take their third freight token. All right, it's now come back to us. We currently have 30 pounds to our name, and with four cards played, we definitely don't want to play the director just yet. We want to play at least one more so we can get the bonus for that card. And when we look at some of the other options, well, with Ship Agent, we have the green player who just invested, which would be... Not that great for us, a very expensive venture. Actually, we can't afford it. <laughs> and the blue player also invested, so we certainly cannot do any shipping on this one turn. Uh, now, when it comes to coal, we can make a little bit of coal, but every single one of our ships currently has one coal, so it's kind of okay enough. I think we should probably think about either transporting or doing the region scoring. If we were to do region over here in Boston, then we would get 30 pounds plus 20, so that'd be 50 pounds total and two points and the green player would also get 20 pounds. Or if we did region over here in New York, we would get, let's see, 80 plus 40, that'd be 120 pounds plus four points. But the problem is that blue would also get uh, to go. They would get 100 pounds themselves, and then they would get two points for that. And, well, we would be consuming the blue's cubes, and we, we would also, as a bonus, be able to um, grab uh, 30 more pounds down here. But I think if this did not have a uh, coal on it, we would be incentivized to do that because we, as a, as a bonus, get 70 pounds. But for a 30 pound bonus, I don't think that's a good enough thing. Let's go ahead and just do transport. I think we are going to ignore the Atlantic some more. Hmm, I wonder, maybe we shouldn't because we can pick any two of our ships. And when we look around, we certainly want to do the Lusitania. I'm sorry, the Lusania. Uh, different ship. <laughs> uh, when we do that one, that's going to get us 80 pounds right away. And then, let's see, the Columbia is 40 pounds. The Atlantic is still 30 pounds, which is not quite as good. And we look at the other metrics. I suppose the Atlantic does hold 1,200 people. So if we potentially grabbed a cruise card, then we can get 120 pounds out of this one versus the only 80 pounds over here in the Columbia. I think... Let's go ahead and do that. Let's um, activate this one down here. Um, maybe we'll pick up that cruise card. Maybe we won't. Uh, it's not a huge decision here, but that means that we're going to have 80 plus 40. So that's 120 pounds right there. And then we're going to get four points. So that jumps us into second place at 15. Oops, I just realized we did that in the wrong order, unfortunately. With this transport card, it does say we have to deploy one ship if possible. And we do actually have this... Um, Fürst Bismarck, or however you pronounce that, that is in our area. So we do have to deploy this, but I think I'm going to stick with the uh, game plan that I had for that last turn. If you look at the date, it's 1891, and over here we have 1893. So we wouldn't even be able to put it in over at New York. So it's not going to change any of that stuff. And I think we should go ahead and put this in at Boston. We've got two trading houses over here, so it's a pretty good spot for us. It's going to go ahead and bump the Scotia out of the game. The only neutral ship is finally gone, so there's uh, no real fanfare there. And these are going to slide down. This one goes here. It, of course, comes in with a coal, and it has a captain. And now I think I'm quite happy that we decided to go with the Columbia instead of the Atlantic because I could do a pretty good regional scoring here, maybe on next turn. It's now time for Green to take their turn, and they decided to go ahead and load up some coal. Now, when we look over here, they have one, two, three, four, plus the two on their card means that they have six to put out. So one's going to go on the Abyssinia, then the Germanic, then the city of Berlin, and now all of theirs are evened up, and they're going to put it down on everything but the Abyssinia. For Blue's turn, they have decided to go with a transport action, and before they do the main text, they do have to deploy the Britannia. The ship was built in 1887, and that means that it could go into Philadelphia, or over into Halifax. Um, New York and Boston both have younger ships than that, and they decide they don't actually want to bump out their ship just yet. They're going to go over here to Halifax. So that is going to kick Abyssinia out, and it's going to slide both of these down. And for the first time in the game, we're actually going to be scrapping a steamship. 
So this goes in right here, and just like I mentioned before, when a ship gets scrapped, it is going to do a farewell tour as long as it can. In this case, the Abyssinia does have a coal. The green player kind of saw that coming and threw that on there just barely in time. So the green player is going to get 30 uh, pounds, but also they're going to score based off of that region. So they have two trading houses here, so green will also get two victory points. However, that is not all, because as a steamship, it has a flag, so there are even more points to be gathered for the green player. This, as a black ship, goes to the black flag, and we see they are at the seven-point mark there. So that is going to be seven plus two, or they're currently at nine. And finally, when we look at the docks, we see there are three black ships there. So that's nine plus three, or 12 victory points they get. And then the Abyssinia is scrapped out of the game. So they were at 19. That's going to bring them all the way up to 31 points. And as you can see, this is a big way in which players are going to get points. But it's also worth noting that when the game is over, every single ship that is out on the board is going to be scrapped in this way. So every ship that's going to be purchased is going to be run through and getting all of these points that are aligned with the dock and with the tokens on their player board. Okay, now that all of that deploying dust has settled, Blue can now activate two of their ships to transport, and they decide just to do these two over here in New York. They're deciding not to do Belgian land just yet. I mean, if it gets bumped out, then it's going to get activated anyway and score these points. Um, over here, they think it's, um, they, they care a little bit less because also the Belgian land they could activate for the crews to get a lot more money out of it. But either way, they're going to do these two right here. That is going to be 70 plus 30 or 100 pounds for them, and then two points because of the trading house. And with that, they tie us at 15. All right, it's now time for us to take our next action, and with five cards out, that does mean that the director card is looking pretty attractive to us because we would get that uh, one bonus on there, and maybe we would go ahead and get another coal or something like that because uh, our coal production is not amazing at this part of the game. Uh, we could also play two more uh, cards we have in our hand and then go for the uh, 2x bonus down here, but I think that might be stalling a little bit too much for an extra bonus. I think we have some pretty good options up above, so let's go ahead and do a director action. We, of course, started off by getting our bonus, and I do think that getting a coal is a good idea uh, to just get more out when we do those coal actions. And now we can just pull this entire hand back up and choose a new extension card. Looking out at all these options, I have to say I am definitely interested in getting a second commerce card. Uh, being able to back-to-back -back play these down would get us uh, 400 uh, pounds for just two actions, and it would get even better if we were able to place one or two more of our trading houses down, which is definitely a possibility. Um, the crews would be okay. We have a ship that would get us 130 pounds when we activated it, but again, that also consumes a coal. It also gets you victory points if you're in a good spot for it, versus commerce, which does not activate uh, the coal that are currently on your ships. Uh, I don't think we necessarily have need for another shipyard card. Like We've been fine with one per cycle, and when it comes to the investments, I'm kind of okay with our current one. I mean, everything else is so expensive right now. I don't know if it really is that big of a benefit. Either way, I think just having lots of money is probably a good idea to try and buy more ships. So let's go ahead and grab this commerce. That means that the shipyard is going to be discarded. We can now shift these down and then pull two more out. We have another one of those global cards, which I think is more attractive for players now. Uh, early game, it didn't matter quite as much, but it lets you uh, activate one ship per region, or you can do um, uh, one ship per type of flag. And then we can flip this one over, and we have another cargo, which also I think is going to be much more attractive at this point, where we have some ships out on the board that can uh, uh, haul a lot more uh, tonnage than the previous ones did, and we can probably get quite a bit of uh, money out of that. So either way, that's the new set there. And the rest of our turn is pretty simple. We have to play the Commerce down. We have four of these out, so that's going to go ahead and get us 200 pounds. And right away, we're back up to 350. Maybe we'll do it again on the next turn and then be able to easily purchase a couple new ships out on the market. We've now come back to the green player, and they're going to go ahead and play their ship agent, and they're going to copy our Commerce. They currently have three trading houses out, so that's going to generate for them 150 pounds, and that is a pretty simple turn for them. We've now come over to blue, and they've decided just to do a regular coal action. They have two on their uh, board, plus the two here. It means that they have four total, so one will go to the Adriatic, one goes to the city of New York, one goes on the Harmonia, and the last one can go on any of them, and they're going to put it over on the city of New York again. Once again, we find that it is our turn. We can now grab our cards. We have a whole bunch of them to choose from at this point in the game, and uh, we did that Commerce card on our previous turn and got a bunch of money, 
and I was talking about potentially doing the Commerce card again, but when I look out to the map, I realize that there's only one more location on the entire map that we can actually fit one of our trading houses down. And considering we have two of these Commerce cards, I think we're definitely incentivized to try and maximize the value we can grab from them. So let's go ahead and do an investment action. This can only go down over here in Halifax because we already have two in Boston and New York and Philadelphia is full up. So we're gonna go over here. It's gonna cost us 50 pounds and I guess next time we do the commerce, it's gonna immediately pay for itself with one uh, tick. But I think this is still probably gonna be worth it for us. And of course, for the other side, we get to take one of the bonuses and we do have one red ship. So part of me feels like we should take another red token, but that ship is nowhere near getting scrapped. It's still at the top of the row. And what I mentioned before that you get points for completing rows. The way it works is for uh, completing this first row here, we get five points for completing this row and be 10 and then 15 and 20. So I think let's go ahead and grab a green now. We can just fill that in. That's gonna secure five points in for us at the end of the game. And it also means we're slightly more incentivized maybe to grab a green ship because, well, it's now gonna be worth uh, two more points uh, when it eventually gets scored. So with that, we are done with our investment turn. At this point, we've now come back to the green player and they've decided they wanna to go to the shipyard. Uh, that means they can buy up to two ships and it looks like they currently have 210 pounds. When we look up here to the ship market, we can see that the St. Louis is gonna be 100 pounds and the Canada is gonna be 110. Well, that is exactly 210. And the green player decides that they definitely want the Canada because they've gone hard on black and they decide, uh, well, they're able to afford it. So they're gonna go ahead and grab a ship. They've already taken one green token, which is uh, pretty good for them. Uh, red would certainly be better, but there are no reds that are even remotely cheap enough. So they're gonna grab these two for all of their money. And they, of course, have to immediately deploy one. So they've decided to continue their taking over of the Philadelphia shipping lane. That's going to bump the um, uh, Belgian land out from the bottom. This is going to go up to the top, which is okay because it's an 1896, which is definitely younger than 1884. Uh, once that goes in there, the blue player now gets to do a farewell tour with the Belgian land because they did have a, uh, a coal on there. So that is gonna be worth uh, 30 pounds to them and also two points for their trade houses. When they go down and consult their board, they see that on the blue track, they get another three points. So they're now currently at five. And then with three blue ships in the docks, that's three more. So they're gonna get eight points total, which is gonna bring them up to 23. And actually, I've just realized I've made a slight ordering mistake. We're supposed to refill this market row before we actually go ahead and deploy the ships. So that means that the Kaiser Wilhelm would have been down here. That would have been another blue flag. So the blue player should actually be at 24 points. So not a big deal. And I'll try to do that in order for the next ones. And lastly, we can go ahead and refill the ship row. We now get to have the, ooh, white Cedric. It's been a long time since we've seen a white ship, uh, mostly because uh, four of them were pulled out before the game even started. I think I figured out that the four were from the middle section of this deck. Uh, next up, we have a red Haverford and then a blue Deutschland. And we've now hit the eights at the top of the deck. Okay, it is Blue's turn again, and they are gonna do a ship agent action, and they are gonna copy our invest action, actually. With that, they are gonna put another one of their trading houses out. And with it, they're gonna to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with us in New York, so they now also have the two trading houses like we do. When it comes to the investment bonus, they can take the green, white, or red. They're pretty happy on green for the moment, so they're gonna go ahead and grab a red one. Okay, it has now come back to us. And despite having all of these cards, I think I already know what I wanna do. We invested specifically so we can increase our um, our trading house infrastructure, uh, we already have 300 pounds. Let's go ahead and play commerce again. We have five of our trading houses out, so that's gonna get us another 250 pounds. So that is gonna bring us all the way to 550 pounds, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna be going to the ship market on our next turn. Green now gets to take their turn, and they've decided to do a director. They now have one, two, three, four, five, six cards, so they do get a bonus. And they want to take another one of these green freight ones. They're going to slide it down right over there. And with that, all of these come back into their hand and they can pick a new extension card to evaluate. After thinking about all of their options, they actually decide to grab the other cruise card. And once that is taken, this coal is going to be discarded. We can go ahead and slide all these down. And this one comes out. It's another ship agent. And with that, our draw deck is exhausted. So we're going to shuffle up the old discard pile and then draw our last card, and it looks like it's gonna be another one of those better transport cards. 
When playing the cruise card, the first thing the green player has to do is deploy one ship if possible, and they do have the St. Louis right here. When they look at the ship construction date, it is 1894, and that means that they're not actually allowed to send it over to Philadelphia because it currently has an 1896, but the rest of the lanes are actually available to themselves, and, well, they're trying to figure out what they want to do. They don't really want to go over to Halifax because it will bump off the Germanic, which currently has two coal on it, and it would waste one of the coal, which isn't great for them. Also, they would be uh, still having just two ships in that region, which is nice for their double trading house. But I think in the end, they decided they're going to head over to Boston uh, with 94. That's going to go right in at the top. It's going to bump out their Cuddy Sark as well. We can see that this was Green's starting sailing ship, so it really lasted quite a while. Uh, it started in 1869, but I guess thematically we're now in 1894. Um, they don't have any trading houses, so they're not going to get any points for this, but Green will get 20 pounds. Now that all of that is taken care of, the Green player can finally do their cruise. They're going to transport over here with the Umbria. It's going to use one of their coal. And we look down here, we see it has 1,500 passengers, which means they are going to get 150 pounds. And then, of course, they have one trading house up here. So that's going to give them one point, bringing them up to 32. We can now move on to the blue player, and they are also going to be playing a director. But I think for the first time, once this goes down, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards played. So they get to do the bonus on the bottom, which says they can take two of these tokens, but they cannot be the same. So they've decided they're going to go ahead and grab one of these coal bunkers, and then they're also going to take one of these red luggage tokens. And now all of these cards are going to come back into their hand, and they can grab a new extension. After thinking about it for a minute, they've decided to grab another one of these ship agent cards. That's going to discard the investment one. We can then slide these down, and we can see that we're going to have another global. Nope, that's actually going to get discarded because you can't have two up at the same time. And then we have a shipyard, and then a cargo also gets bounced for the same reason. And let's see here, we've got a coal, upgraded coal card. With the ship agent they just grabbed, they're going to copy our commerce that we just played. And they have four of their trading houses out, so that means they're going to get to grab 200 pounds. With that done, it now comes back to us, and we are crazy rich. <laughs> we've got 550 pounds. So I think that once again, we have a little bit of a no-brainer turn. Let's go ahead and spend our money and buy some ships. Right off the bat, I think we want to grab the Cedric. It is the only white one to come out in quite a while, and we've already built a nice victory point infrastructure for these white ships. Um, if we look over here, it's going to be 130 plus 30. So that's a 160 uh, pound ship, which is not actually crazy. You know, look over here. This one is 150, and that one is 270. I guess this one's actually 170. But either way, I think this is a pretty reasonably priced ship for us. Uh, now we just have to figure out what else we want to grab. When we look at the tokens that we've already acquired, it definitely seems like blue and black are slightly more incentivized. Uh, blue is even better because there are four of them in the docks as opposed to the three for the black player. Unfortunately, the only blue card is way over here, and <laughs> I don't think we want to spend 270 pounds right now on that blue uh, ship. Even though we have tons of money and we're not actually spending that much here, I would like to keep buying ships. So I think we want to keep the ball rolling, and if we look at our other options, you know, we don't have actually any blacks either. So it's going to be green or it's going to be red, which, as far as we are concerned, are similar, although there is one more green in the docks. So we may get slightly more points for that one. When we take a closer look at these two ships, we can see that the New England is much cheaper at only 90 pounds, but the Baltic at 170 pounds can carry a ton of tonnage. <laughs> and if we were to potentially grab one of these cargo cards, because nobody's taken any of them yet, so there's another one in the deck, then a 20 ton uh, limit would actually get us 200 pounds, which is very effective. And I think that is probably good enough. Also, if we take this one, we know that the New England is going to burn down into the docks, which will make all of our green ships worth one more point. So when I add up all these costs, that is going to be 330 pounds total. Fortunately, we had so much money that even after doing that, we still have a reasonable amount left over and still lots of ways to grab more. I'm now going to make sure I do this in the right order by doing the market before we deploy a ship. And that means that the New England is going to come down here to the docks, being an extra point for our green ships. And then the Armenian is going to slide down as are the other two, and now we can pull three more from the top of the deck. We have the green Rotterdam, we've got uh, the black Mauritania, 
And then we have another white. Ah, it is the Lusitania now. <laughs> the time has now come for us to deploy one of these two ships. And I just realized I was talking about how the Baltic is better because it can do a cargo uh, order at uh, 24,000 um, tons. But I forgot to check that the uh, Cedric also does 21,000 tons. And uh, it's as long as you are between 20,000 and 30,000. So both of these are equally good. But if we had taken not taken the Baltic and taken the other one, then a red ship would have burned instead. I guess we already had a red ship up here. But either way, I'm not going to read you everything. We're going to stick with our mistakes and go ahead and play one of these. And I think it makes the most sense to play one of them down into Boston. And since both of these were uh, made in the 1900s, um, these are the first 1900 ships to actually come out in the game for us. They can go anywhere, and we can do either one of these. And I figure, since we already score really well for the white, and the green kind of needs a little bit of help, let's go ahead and deploy the white and maybe try to get more of those green tokens so that um, it'll be longer before the green ship gets scrapped and we can potentially get more points for it. So we can go ahead and bump this in right over here. That's actually going to kick out our Atlantic, which is totally fine. We, of course, get a captain and a coal on the Cedric. And when the Atlantic does its farewell tour, it's going to get rid of its coal and get us 30 pounds, as well as two points for our trade houses. The Atlantic is also going to pick up seven more points for us because of all of these mail tokens. So we are now at nine. And then when we add in the four flags in the dock, that means we're going to grab 13 points for the scrapping of the Atlantic. We were at 15. We are now at 28. All right, with that, we are all done with our ship buying. So the turn can now go over to the green player, and they have decided to do a transport. This is one of the upgraded ones. It is going to allow them to do three of their ships. They decided they want to activate the Germanic for 40 pounds, the city of Berlin for another 40 pounds, and then all the way over here, the Canada for 50 pounds. Now, um, over here, they're going to get four points for these two trading houses and another one over here for the Canada. So that is five points total, as well as it looks like 130 pounds. And that'll bring them up to 37. It's now Blue's turn to go, and they've decided to play their fleet card. They get two victory points for each steamship with a different flag, and they currently have three different color flags out in their fleet, which means they jump up to 30 points. Okay, so it's now come back to us. We can take a look at our cards. And it occurs to me, I should probably mention one other slight rule thing. You may have noticed these little tokens that are hanging out in each of the player areas. These are one-time use bonuses that you can discard in order to activate one of the current extension cards out on the main row. You don't discard that extension card or anything. I think it's just kind of a get out of jail type of thing, but it also consumes your entire turn and does not play a card down. And playing cards is good because it kind of races you towards getting these director bonuses. So that's part of the reason why I have not actually used these yet. I'm not sure if anyone will use them this game. I'll try to keep them in mind, but it's a little hard playing all three characters, of course. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at our card options for this turn. Um, we could director, but that would be the fifth card, and that would be a bummer. We definitely want to wait until at least six cards for that one. Um, we could do a transport, but right now we do have two ships that have coal, but they're not particularly great for us to actually activate, and same with the region. And the reason I say that is because down here with the uh, first Bismarck, well, if we consume this coal and then somebody puts a ship in right there, it would kick this ship out and it would not even get its farewell um, transport. So realistically, it kind of feels like a waste to ever activate a ship that's down on the bottom. That's not entirely true, but I guess if they don't have any coal on there. So I could do that right here. The green player would activate this. They would get um, 50 pounds, but they would not get any victory points. But then we would be super dry when it comes to coal. We would literally have nothing on any of our cards. Um, then when we look at the ship agent, we could, of course, copy from our opponents. We have two of these cards in our deck. We could do this transport from the green player, but that's really bad for us. We only have two ships with coal at all. But over here, the blue player, they did play the fleet. And right now, we can look out and we see we have a blue ship, we have a white ship, and then we also have a red ship. And, you know, I figure we may as well get in on that while we can, because that fleet card is not going to be out all the time. Why don't we go ahead and ship agent to copy that ability and grab six points. With this action, we go all the way up to 34. We've not quite caught up with the green player, but we're nowhere near as far back as we were for a significant part of the game. It's now the green player's turn, and they have decided with only 300 pounds, they are still going to go over to the shipyard. The first one they like the look of is the Deutschland. That is going to be 220 pounds, and then they're also going to pick up the Armenian for 50 pounds. So that means that they're at 270 pounds total, which they can definitely afford. 
We can now reset the ship market row. The Haverford is going to go over here into the docks. Next, we can slide all three of these over. And now we have the red, probably George Washington. <laughs> and then we have the blue Imperator. And we've got the red France. And now you'll see we are actually in the nines. And we can actually kind of cheat and look ahead. There's only two more ships total. At this point, I may as well show you these last five cards are all $300, and they are actually essentially a building in these different towns. And when you buy them, they just go into your player area and score according to their overall color. Let me just give these a quick little shuffle. And uh, these are not uh, necessary to be bought for the endgame trigger, just all of these white-backed ship cards. It's now time for Green to deploy one of their ships, and they decided to go with the Deutschland. It was constructed in 1900, and that means that it can go down into anything but Boston. And they decide they're actually going to put it into New York. I think it's the first time that Green has actually come into this area. It's going to kick out the Adriatic. And the main reason that they are doing this is because the Deutschland is quite fast. It has 23 knots, which is the fastest out of all of these. And that means that they are going to grab their first of these blue ribbons. As I mentioned before, each one of the completed rows on your player board at the end of the game is going to be worth five victory points. So that is definitely a key part of completing these rows is you're going to have to go to New York at some point. With that action, the Adriatic was kicked out and it's now going to go on its farewell tour. It did have the coal necessary to do that. So it's only going to generate 30 pounds for the blue player and then two points for these trading houses. When we look down at Blue's board, we can see that for green ships, they got all the way down here. So that's actually going to be seven more points. So now they're at nine. And there are four of these green ships in the docks. So that's four more points or 13 total. They were at 30. So now they are all the way up at 43. And it looks like they've taken the lead. Play is now going to come over to Blue and they've decided to play their ship agent. And they're going to copy this shipyard that the green player just did. We can see that the blue player has 400 pounds available to themselves, but they're just going to grab one ship, a very expensive ship. The Mauritania is a uh, 32,000 ton, so it maxes out on the uh, cargo card if somebody is able to grab that, and they're certainly going to be pretty interested in that. Also, this is a screaming fast ship at 26 knots, so the um, blue player is not going to be purchasing anymore. That's going to be 310 pounds for them. This means that the Rotterdam is going to be sent over to the docks. And now, for the first time in the game, green is the most valuable uh, ship over here in the docks. It's got five of them over there. And we go ahead and refill the ship row. And I'm pretty sure, let's see, we have the Aquitania, a black ship. And yes, this is the final ship of the game, the Titanic. Uh, that's uh, fitting, I think. That's a white card right there. And yeah, the rest of these are going to be those buildings. So the game is going to end, or the trigger is going to be uh, happen once the last ship is taken off of this row. We're going to complete the round to us because we're the starting player and then do one more full round. So we're definitely near the end of the game. And these are some pretty big ships as we're getting into the 20th century here. The blue player, of course, must now deploy the Mauritania. And we can also see that at 26 knots, this is actually the fastest ship in the game. I didn't realize that. So they are indeed going to send this over to New York. That is going to bump out our unfortunate Columbia down there. And once this goes in here, 26 is the fastest one. So the blue player is going to grab this blue riband right here. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be the last one to be acquired in the game because <laughs> everything else is slower. We now have to take care of our Columbia right here, but unfortunately it does not have any coal on it, so it's not going to do a farewell voyage. So we're going to be missing out on a couple points and 40 pounds, unfortunately. But it is still worth seven points for us from our tokens on the board and four points at the dock. So that means we are going to get 11 points total, and we have now jumped into the lead at 45. Okay, it's now time for us to take our turn again. We've got five cards down here, and I think with the game getting uh, feeling like it's starting to get kind of close, why don't we go ahead and do a director card? Uh, this gets us the six cards total, so we're going to be able to grab one of the tokens that we want, and we definitely want to fill out this row if possible, I think. We currently have one red ship out on the board, and this one green ship that has not yet been deployed, so I figure let's go ahead and take a red token because it's more likely that the red one will be scrapped before this green one. Uh, it's likely this green one will never actually get scrapped. Uh, so we've gone ahead and taken our bonus. We can now go ahead and grab a new extension. At this point, all these cards should look quite familiar to us. 
Uh, we have 250 pounds, so the shipyard does seem kind of appealing because, well, most of the victory points in this game come from purchasing these ships, and there are only six ships left in the game. But we do have our own shipyard in our hand, and we have a couple of those copying actions, so we can jump on other players' uh, ship buying actions as well. Uh, and instead, I think, why don't we go with this cargo? Nobody's actually played with this card just yet. It'll allow us to go ahead and deploy our ship and then get 200 pounds, and then maybe we can swing around and then do a uh, ship purchase right after that with a lot more money and grab multiple ships, because with only 250 pounds, we can only grab one ship right now. So that means that Global is going to be discarded, and we need to pull two more out. We have a Coal, which is going to be discarded, and we've got a Fleet, and then we have a Blue Riband, which is definitely more attractive now, although not exceptionally so, considering it's pretty similar to these uh, triple transports for most of us, because nobody got more than three of these ribbands. The first thing we have to do is deploy one ship if possible, and we do have the Baltic that's been sitting in our area. We can see it was built in 1904, so it could not go over here to New York, but I think let's go ahead and send it over to Boston. This is a good zone for us. We've been kind of holding off on activating over here because we figured somebody would kick the uh, first Bismarck out. Why not have it be us? <laughs> so we will bump this out, slide both of these down, and then let's go ahead and see here. We are going to be able to do our uh, farewell voyage with the Bismarck. That is going to get us 60 pounds, and it's also going to get us two points for our trading houses. Next up, when we look down to our player board, we see that the blue section is over here at five victory points. So that's going to be five plus the two, or seven right now. And when we look over to the docks, we see there are four of these blue flags over there. So that's going to be seven plus four, or 11 victory points for scrapping over our Bismarck. That takes us from 45 all the way up to 55 points. And we can go ahead and put this token right here to remind us we went around. Next up, we can finally evaluate the first cargo action of the game. So it says we can let one ship transport, and then we earn the income. We're going to go down here and activate the Baltic. So that one, actually, wait, we could do the Cedric as well. No, let's do the Baltic. They're essentially the same to us. We're going to get rid of this coal. We can see it is going to transport 24,000 tons, which gets us into the 200 pound range. And we're also going to get two points for our trade houses. This means we're once again back up to 500 pounds, which is great because we'll probably want to do some ship shopping. And we get to extend our lead a little bit more to 58. It's now the green player's turn, and they've decided to do a region card. The first thing they have to do is go ahead and deploy the Armenian. We can see that it was built in 1895, and that means that it can't go to Philadelphia because that is 1896, New York is 1907, and Boston is 1904. So fortunately for them, there is an 1887. This is the only spot that the Armenian can even enter the board to. And it's worth noting that if all of these locations were a, um, a newer date than a ship, that's okay. You just kind of keep the ship in front of you and you will score it at the very end of the game. It's just never going to like make a presence out there on the map. But either way, they're going to deploy the Armenian, the only place they can, over here in Halifax, which is going to bump out their Germanic. We can see that the Germanic does indeed have a coal on it, so it can do its farewell voyage. That's going to generate 40 pounds for them and two victory points. They've been able to pick up three of these luggage tokens, so that is seven plus two, or nine. And then finally, three more for the docks, so that is going to be 12 points total, bringing them up to 49. Next up on the card, they get to choose a region, and they are going to do Halifax, and they're going to activate all of the ships there. So that means the Armenian is going to get them 30 pounds, the uh, city of Berlin is going to give them 40 pounds, and it means that the Britannia is going to give the blue player 30 pounds. But since this is the oldest foreign ship, the green player also gets that as a bonus. So that means that the green player is actually going to be getting 100 pounds total, and blue is going to get 30. Green is also going to grab two points with that. And that brings them up to 54. At this point, play has now come back to the blue player, and they have decided they want to cruise. They don't have any ships to deploy. So they're just going to activate the Mauritania. They, it can hold uh, 2,200 people, so that means they're going to get 220 pounds, and they'll get two points for the trade houses, which brings them up to 45. Alrighty, it is our turn again. We've got a fistful of cards, and I only care about one of them. <laughs> I think we want to spend all of our gobs money, or as much as we can, hopefully to try and get uh, two different ships, because there's only six ships left over. So let's go ahead and play this one down, and 
Hopefully, when one of our opponents buys a ship, we can jump on and do a ship agent to purchase one more time, if we have enough money, of course, but we have lots of ways to make lots of money at this point of the game. When we look out to see all of the various costs, I don't think we have that many options, actually. We have 510 pounds. Um, over here, I definitely think we want the Lusitania. White is the thing that scores the best for us. It does cost us 250, so that is at least us 260 remaining. Uh, that means we could grab this George Washington, but we could not get the Imperator, or... No, we could actually get the France if we wanted to. That is only 250. But I figure if we're just grabbing ships at this point to try and get points, well, the France and the Washington score the same exact amount of points. They're both red, and the Washington is a lot cheaper, so maybe we can jump in and grab something else. So, yeah, why don't we go ahead and do that? So that'll be 250 and plus essentially 190. So, yeah, we'll spend 440 pounds. It looks like the leftmost ship is the Imperator, so that's going to go down to the docks. So there's now five of them over there as well. And now let's go ahead and refill the cargo, and now let's see what cities we have. We have the red Rotterdam, we've got the green Bremen, and we have the black Liverpool. Again, when you buy these, they go into your area, and you're essentially spending $300 for a flag scoring. But that can be worth quite a bit of points for you, depending on the situation you have on your board. We now have to deploy one of these two ships, and I figure let's go ahead and send the Lusitania out. We're going to put it over here in the Boston track. We can see that it was uh, made in 1906, and Boston says 1904. That is going to bump out the St. Louis and slide this in there. It, of course, has a coal and a captain, and the St. Louis is going to do a farewell tour. There's going to be no bonus points from the trade houses, but the green player is going to get 50 pounds. They're going to also get five points for their freight tokens and five more for the docks. So that means that they're going to get 10 victory points, bringing them up to 64. It's now the green player's turn, and they've gone with ship agent, and they're actually going to copy the crews from the blue player. They don't currently have anything to deploy, so they're going to simply activate the Deutschland. It unfortunately does not give them any victory points, and it only gives them 110 pounds, but uh, they can see this game is coming to a close, and it's the best way for them to squeeze out enough money to try and make a purchase here at the end. We've now come back to the blue player's turn, and they're just doing a regular old transport action. With it, they're going to activate the Hamonia for 40 pounds and 2 points, and they're also going to activate the City of New York for 70 pounds and 2 more points. So that is 4 points total, bringing them up to 49. Okay, it is once again our turn, and again, we are the start player. And I think that it is possible that all three of these ships might get purchased before our next uh, turn. And if that's true, then that means our next turn would be our last. So we need to consider this to be our second to last turn. We might have three more turns, but it's not. Uh, I, I doubt we have more than that, that's for sure. And at the moment, we currently have 70 pounds. So obviously, we cannot go out and purchase any ships. We just did that on the last turn. And we look at our state out on the board, we see that there's not a lot of coal anywhere. It seems like everybody has kind of been uh, foregoing coal to try and squeeze money out in different ways because they can see the game is ending. Uh, we could definitely play our coal card, but that would be this whole action. And then on the next turn, we could consume the coal to get money, but that might be too late because next turn might be our last turn. Uh, when we look out here, we can see that we have a coal on the Lusitania and one on the Cedric. So hypothetically, we could do a region activation over here on our turn. That would get us 90 plus 60 or 150 money, as well as four victory points. Another option for us is we could use one of our couple of commerce cards. This, uh, we currently have five of the uh, houses out there, so that would be 250 money, but it would be no points. So realistically, do we want 250 pounds? Um, and zero points, or do we want 150 pounds and four points at this point? Is 100 pounds worth four points? I'm not sure. When the game is over and we are in final scoring, we do get one point for every 100 pounds we have. So I guess getting four points for, for uh, 100 pounds, according to the game design process, is an okay deal. And I guess let's go ahead and do that. So we will do this region activation. But the first thing that happens is we do have to deploy the George Washington, which I guess actually means my math is slightly off because we could deploy it over here and get even more money. Yeah, this is actually, I think, good. Are we allowed to do it? The Washington was built in 1909, and down here, the Lusitania was built in 1906. So we are good. 
Let's go ahead and slide this in right over here. It of course needs a captain and a coal, and we have just bounced out the Cedric, which is gonna activate. So realistically, we're gonna get to activate three ships this turn, and I guess make like 70 more pounds than I expected to. So I think this is definitely the right call for us. Um, so with the Farewell Voyage for the Cedric, we are gonna get 60 pounds and then two victory points. Also, the Cedric is a white ship, so when we look down here, that's going to be seven more points, so we're now at nine. And once again, just like all game long, there are four of these white ships in the docks. Uh, no new ones came in because they were um, perceived as so valuable to me. I think we bought all of them throughout this game, so that means we're at nine plus four is 13 more points, and that's going to bring us all the way up to 71. Okay, well, let's now come back to Boston, because we haven't actually done most of this card just yet. So we are choosing this region, and we're going to activate all ships on it. Uh, we can't do the Baltic, because obviously it doesn't have coal, but the Lusitania is going to give us 90 pounds, and the George Washington is going to give us 70, and we are going to grab four more victory points for doing that, which gets us up to 75. Okay, we're now back to the green player, and they've decided to play their director. That is their sixth card played, and they are definitely going to take one of these mailbags to complete this row right here. And now all oh, of this is going to come back into their hand, and they can choose an extension. Out of all these options, they've decided to go for the shipyard, and that means that the transport is going to be uh, taken out. And we can now reveal another shipyard, and we have a blue riband, which is going to be thrown into the discard pile. We can shuffle this guy up real quick, and let's see, what's next? We have a transport all the way back. So green now plays this upgraded shipyard. Again, the only real benefit here is that you get an extra coal when you put the ship down, so it's probably not going to impact the green player too much here. Uh, they currently have 330 pounds. And with it, they are going to grab the France. It's only going to cost them 220 pounds. And now the Aquitania is going to come down to the docks. And this is a big reason why the green player did that, because they currently have three black ships out on the board. So that means they also just generated three more points by making sure this black ship went down into the docks. We can now reseed the board. And it looks like we're going to have the white Le Havre. And the final card is the blue Hamburg. It looks like the France was built in 1910, and the green player wants to put it down here in Halifax, which is fine, because the last one is the Armenian, which was built in 1895, so a 15-year uh, spread there. That's going to bump out the city of Berlin as all these come down, and actually, there's going to be an additional coal on there. I don't want to forget that, not that it will probably matter in this game. <laughs> so now, the city of Berlin is not going to do a farewell tour, so the green player is going to miss out a couple points and some money there. But the ship is black, and the green player has gone pretty hard on those coal bunkers, so that is going to be 7 points right there. And then another 4 in the docks, so that's 11 points total, and that means we're actually tied. With that all done, it's now the blue player's turn, and they also are going to direct her, and in fact, their turn is going to be quite similar to the green player. They are going to take their bonus, since they do have 6 cards out. It is also going to be a mailbag. When they go ahead and collect all of their cards and choose an extension, they are also going to grab the upgraded shipyard, so that means this coal gets discarded, and then we don't have that many cards left over here. We have a global, and then we have a blue ribbon, which gets discarded, and a coal that's going to sit there. Blue now plays this shipyard just like the green player, but they have more money to play with. Looks like they have 460 total. Unfortunately for blue, everything is so expensive, they're not actually able to grab two things. And it is worth mentioning that you're never allowed to grab two of these final buildings. You can take a final building and a ship if you want, or just a final building, and that's going to be what the blue player does. They're going to grab Bremen here, and that's going to cost them 320 pounds. This means that the Titanic is the leftmost ship, so it never actually got to set sail in this game. It's instead going to come down here to the docks. And then all of these cards are going to slide over, but there are no more new ones to draw. With that, Blue's turn is done because they don't actually have a ship to put out onto the map. And that means that the last steamship has been purchased, and that is the endgame trigger. So we're going to finish the round, but we already have because we are the next uh, player, and we are the starting player. So that means that we are going to do one more full round, so everybody gets one more turn, and then the game will be over, and we can do final scoring.
All right, so let's go ahead and figure out what we're gonna do for our last turn of the game. And right from the get-go, we are in a really unfortunate position of having 290 pounds. We are just 10 pounds away from being able to purchase another one of those buildings that are up on the ship row, and those are worth a bunch of points. And uh, 10 pounds is the smallest unit in the game. We're just one away, but uh, it was not meant to be, so instead we should look at some other options. Now, uh, one that uh, appears up on the board is we could finalize this row. But I haven't told you everything about this, uh, these rows here. I did say that the first one is five points to complete and the next one is 10 points to complete and so on. But the uh, your lowest incomplete row is gonna be worth uh, points per tile equal to the number of row. What that means is that this is row one, this is row two, and this is row three. So uh, uh, if we ended the game right now, our lowest incomplete row would be this one and we'd get two, four, six, eight points for it. So if we fill in this tile, we're only getting two more points so it's not a very authoritative, strong turn for us to do. Instead, I think, um, just looking at all these cards, like we don't have um, anything that's gonna actually generate us points. We don't have a single piece of coal out there on the map. So instead, realistically, the only option we have to make points is to go ahead and play the director. We have four cards, so we're allowed to do that. We don't get any bonuses. These are gonna come back into our hand, but now, importantly, we can choose one of the extension cards to play. When we look up here at all these options, nothing is going to help us out except for the fleet. Um, it's kind of surprising this uh, lasted throughout the whole game in this deck. It's a pretty cool card, and it's definitely going to allow us to squeeze out some victory points here at the very end because we're going to get to play it, and we're going to get two points per active uh, flag color that we have on our ships. This also means that I should discard this and draw new ones, but I can already tell you that our opponents are not actually able to do any more director actions, so we can just get rid of these for the rest of the game. So let's go ahead and look out to our fleet, and I realize I just kind of misspoke. It's not active ships as in having coal, it's just ships that we own, and this would actually include ships that are not even deployed in front of our area, but right now that's not the case. And we're in a pretty good spot because we have a green ship, a white ship, and two red ships, so that means this card is going to get us six points, which is pretty good for our last turn of the game. So that's going to bring us up to 81 points. All right, so now we go over to the green player and we forgot to calculate something with that final turn of ours. And that is that the green player, of course, has a ship's agent in their hand and they're just going to copy our fleet action. Uh, when we look out to the map, we can see that the green player has red ships, they have a blue ship and they have black ships. So that means they also have three different types. So they are also gonna get six victory points. So they stayed right with us, unfortunately. We did not really make any headway on them and they do appear to be our main competitor at this point. So with that, they jumped right on top of us at 81 points. And here we now are at the last turn of the game with the blue player, and they're just gonna play their own fleet card. They currently have a red, a green, a black, and a blue, so they're actually gonna get eight points from this play. And that jumps them up to 57, which is unfortunately still pretty far behind us to uh, in the lead. All right, we've now reached the end of the game, and we can do our final scoring. The main bit of final scoring is simply going through and scoring every single one of these ships, but I'm going to go ahead and just fast forward through that instead of explaining every step because at this point, you really should know how this works. And now we can perform the last two scoring options, although I just realized I didn't actually score Bremen. Uh, this is actually worth 12 points to the blue player as well. So they're actually over here. And now let's go ahead and do money. It's gonna be one point per 100 pounds. The green, uh, the blue player over here has 140, so that's one point. The green player has 110, so that's one point. And we have 290, so it's just barely two points, unfortunately for us. And now we can finally do the row scoring. Let's go ahead and do us first. We know this first row is worth five points. And then this is the second row, it's incomplete, so we get two points per tile, because it's the second row. So that's gonna be two, four, six, eight, plus the five is gonna be 13 extra points for us, bringing us to 140. Green also only completed one row, so that's five points. And then that's gonna be six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 points for them, bringing them up to 149. And finally, the blue player over here also completed one row and almost did the second one, so that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 points. So that means their final score is 128. Our final score is 140, and Green wins the game with 149 points, and that completes a full game of Transatlantic. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. I certainly want to apologize once again for the lower audio quality and how echoey it was. I will do my best to make sure that does not happen again in the future. Uh, but when it comes to the actual game itself, I think it showed itself pretty well. Like the scores were somewhat tight there near the end. I do think that if I had instead uh, bought a uh, token and put that down onto our player board, we would have actually gotten more than the two points uh, that I said. I put a little note on there, but that actually would have been a five point swing that the green player would uh, not have been able to copy from us, but they probably would have been able to get a couple points themselves. So I don't think that would have won me the game. And I think in general, all of us kind of uh, pursued similar-ish strategies, like I believe all of us had two trading houses on at least one of the ocean lanes, but it did seem like the green player got a lot more of their points based uh, from those trading houses versus uh, we got a ton of our points from the ships, and I think the blue player, they definitely caught up because of the amount of just raw points they had in ships that they had purchased out there at sea. Uh, when it comes to the various strategic decisions that we made throughout the game, I do wonder if maybe I did not prioritize putting coal down enough uh, pretty much for all of the characters, because at the end of the game, none of the ships had coal, although maybe that's right. I mean, you don't need coal on ships at the end of the game, so perhaps I kind of coasted right in there, but on those last couple turns, it seemed like having a couple more coal out there, like maybe one more coal turn earlier on in the game, would have been nice to get a nice influx of money and be able to buy a couple more ships or those buildings at the end, because that really is where the vast majority of the points lie um, throughout this entire game. It's just buying those ships because, you know, um, if you get the color that's really matched up, you can get like 12 to 14 points, which is a lot more than the two or four or even six you might be getting from doing the transportation actions for the ships that are on those lanes. But of course, you get those points in addition to the points for the ships. So I think everybody uh, played this game relatively well. I'm not exactly sure why the blue player lagged behind as much as they did, but everybody took their own path, and I think it uh, showed itself pretty well, and that's all I really have to say about this playthrough. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel through Patreon, including all of these producer-level pledges. If you too would like to directly support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash johngetsgames, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you'd like to see more full game playthroughs like this one, as well as in-depth board game reviews and vlogs, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.